Welcome back to Just Books. Fatima Bhutto's much talked about book, Songs of Blood and Sword, is both a journey back into Pakistan's stormy politics and, of course, a memoir of her tragic family history. Must have been a very painful decision uh, to write this book. Where did your journey with the book begin? I mean, the first pages actually start with your father's assassination right outside your home in Karachi. Uh, awful moment, awful start. How did you go back? Well, just before my father was killed, one of the last conversations we had was about his life. And I, as a 14-year-old child, was fascinated by his stories and, and said, you must write a book. And he laughed and said, oh, it's too dangerous. You know, they'll kill me if, they, if, if I reveal what I know. You write it. You write it for me when I'm gone. And of course, we didn't r realize, we could have never anticipated that that would have been in hours. You know, we thought we had years, decades even. So I always knew I was going to write this book. And I always knew it had to start with, with my last promise to my father. Right. But of course, the book is not just about uh, your father's life. Uh, it really goes into your grandfather's history, the late Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, who was hanged. Uh, then, of course, current Pakistani or more recent Pakistani politics, which involved your aunt Benazir, mm -hmm. her husband, who's the current president of your country. Uh, what was it like to look into all that again? And a particularly tortured family history. Certainly, and I think it was impossible to talk about this family without talking about this country as well. Um, all the countries in our region, all these um, recently independent subcontinental countries have a, an unfortunate history of political violence, of political assassinations, and there's an amazing silence that, that we all share over them. So if I was going to tell the story of my family, then I had to also tell the story of the country that they lived in, were shaped by, um, and, who, and, and the country that shared a lot of the tragedy and violence, in fact, that the family um, itself had. Right. But it's both uh, murky politics, indeed. Very murky family history, for example, uh, the deep-seated division and later disagreements and loathing between your late father and, and your aunt Benazir. Do you think it was, for example, a case of simple turf war that Mir Murtaza Bhutto, the firstborn son of Zulfikar Ali, should actually have led Pakistan rather than Benazir? No, I think the problem with, with dynasty, though, is that it makes things about turf and it, it makes it impossible for two different people with two different political beliefs or ideologies um, to share a space because dynasty by itself is exclusive. Dynasty is restrictive. Um, it is not an inclusive or a participatory system. So I think anyone who then believes in dynasty or anyone who has made a life or a career out of this sort of entitled politics will feel threatened whether there's opposition from home or from the family or from the outside. So Benazir Bhutto was clearly threatened by her brother, your father. I think she had a very interesting journey to power. And I think she made certain decisions and certain compromises to reach the pinnacle of power, not just once, but twice. And both her governments, um, you know, as we know now, and did on, uh, you know, counts of gross corruption and human rights abuses. And it became really about this cult of personality or about this personal right to government, or right to rule. And I think anybody that was going to speak about the corruption, anybody was going to speak about. Tubar.com.